uh, sponsor, my first question is, is the goal of this bill to help address some of the workforce shortage issues that we're having? Gentleman from Scott. There's several things we're trying to address. I can tell you as an employer, I've talked to several small businesses and I asked them, when you come to youth law, what law do you follow? And they say, we follow federal standards. They're probably breaking Kentucky's law. It's hard enough to run a business with all the regulations we have now. We're trying to make it simple so they can make sure they comply with the law. Lady from Jefferson. Thank you. Will the sponsor please yield to an additional question? He will yield to a question. Sponsor, are you aware that lowering the child labor laws could affect funding for our public schools? General from Scott. I do not, and I don't see how following federal law could lower funding for our federal schools. Lady from Jefferson. So I think this is a really important point, and I hope everybody just pauses what they're doing and pays attention, because I know it's real easy to tune people out when they start talking on the House floor. But one of the components of our SEEK formula is the average daily attendance. That means that districts get their SEEK money based on how many kids show up for the day. And when those numbers start to lower, it will have a ripple effect throughout the public education system that will impact the students who don't sh drop out, who continue to show up. So we know that this bill is giving people more room and encouraging them to pick up a job that would give them full-time full hours, basically, which could really encourage kids who need that additional household income. It could make it really easy for them to have to choose to go to work and pay, help pay rent, help keep food on the table, or show up to school. And so, obviously, you know, the kids that we lose, it's affecting their educational attainment but it will also affect the students who are left behind. And I think that's a really important note that everybody in here needs to be paying attention, that that means that is less money per pupil for every kid in your district. Will the sponsor yield to an additional question? He will yield another question. Okay. Sponsor, do you know what the median salary is for an individual in Kentucky without a high school diploma? General Scott. I do not, but I also want to address the part about the SEEK formula. If we're so concerned about SEEK formula, when we shut the schools down for COVID and went to virtual learning, we know that 28,000 students did not return to classroom. That's what's hurting our SEEK formula. Lady Jefferson. I want to let you know what that number is, and then I'm going to respond to a really important point you, you just made. you wish to speak on the bill? I'm sorry. I'd like to respond to his. You're recognized to speak on the bill. Okay. I'd like to speak on the bill. Here we go. So the median salary for an individual in Kentucky without a high school diploma is $23,105. That's without. If you have a high school diploma, it is $30,986. Guys, that is a $7,881 difference between having a high school diploma or not. You also made a really good point, gentlemen. You talked about how many kids did not show back up to school, and that is a problem. And what I have heard from principals across this state is that many kids in their districts, when they could not go to school, they did go and they worked, and then they could not get them back. That is a problem. What does that say about our state if we can't even get people to finish high school? Vulnerable students with already challenging circumstances cannot afford to have to choose between their education and their ability to get a job without having their safety compromised. We, the adults, 
in this room. We are the lawmakers. We have been elected and we have been charged to better the lives of our fellow Kentuckians. We are failing if we cannot come up with thoughtful and responsible policies to address our issues. But looking to our kids as young as 14 years old to fix a labor shortage, that is not the answer. Our kids did not create this issue, and I have heard people talk about kids being lazy, sitting on the couch, not being motivated, you know. That's unacceptable when in reality we are not taking responsibility or accountability for our own actions that have put us in this situation. Children who do not receive proper education are subjected to labor exploitation and they're far more likely to perpetuate poverty in their communities, which lead to a cycle of not only personal, but social instability. This is not a good bill for Kentucky kids. If you wanna go to work, you can. That's not even a problem. Kids could work before this bill hit the floor. But this is putting us in some very dangerous waters for some of our most vulnerable kids. And I would encourage my fellow colleagues to vote no on this bill. Thank you so much.